or, or whatever, derp a derp a derp. Um, and to be honest, there's no point in doing that because you can't argue with with ball earthers when you've got evidence that they can't verify because they just will not accept it no matter what. Now the problem becomes when when in Blackpool, this Blackpool Tower that I've been looking at, in September, the end of September, it becomes the illuminations, and the whole street that Blackpool Tower sits on is is illuminated, and it's a, it's a it's a tourist attraction. Nice. Um, I'm pretty certain that I will see those illuminations from 30 miles away, and they're at street level. So aside from the tower, it's like nearly 518 feet tall. Um, I sh I think I'll see the street illuminations, and if I do see the street illuminations, a Shinaz Shin owes me a grand, and b it shits all over the Ball Earth model because it means I'm. Ve but not only am I going to do it myself, I'm actually going to hire a mini a mini uh, a minivan. I think you guys call them. Um, and I'm going to try and get eight ball earthers and eight flat earthers from my area to come down and do the verification with me and see it for them fucking selves. Because if they see it with their own two eyes, with their own cameras, and they know that we're 30 miles away, that is not explained on the ball model at all. Now, there's just a pocket of cold air that, that's near the surface of the water. And that yeah, causes another pocket of cold air. And there's a reinversion by the hot air above it. And, in and it just happens to match the curve of the earth perfectly, right? That's my been my issue. That I I mean, even though I still, you know, I take the position that I do, I still don't think boats are going over the curves. I think that's an optical issue with with convergence, vantage I point. And I don't even think it's that. I, the we, size of the Earth wouldn't even dictate it. I wouldn't think it's ridiculous. Well, well, get this, get this, get this. Um, me and Ranty have been doing tests based on nineteen miles, which is what Soundly's been doing his bridge test on. Um, and there's two points to this. Um, the first point is, is Ranty could see me, but I couldn't see him. Um, because of the atmospherics. He could see the area that I was in, although he didn't know precisely where I was to be able to, to zoom in on me with his P900. But I was on the other distance at 19 miles away, the opposing side, and I couldn't even see him. Um, and there was a tanker halfway between the two of us on the horizon to us both. And Ranty said, can you not see the tanker? I'm just behind that tanker. And I was like, what fucking tanker? He got, the, he got a cl virtually a clear line of sight to my area, but I couldn't even see him because of this band of refraction light. So my perception or my optics were visibly significantly different to what his were, and I couldn't even see the tanker that was halfway between us. Yet we're both supposed to be looking directly at each other, and that was that was crazy because it means that we don't get the same visibility all the time. We get it's something to do with the angle of the sun or the the, the, the position of the sun in relation to the bystander, but we didn't get comparable results. We didn't get similar results. We got wildly different, and I was like, whoa. And the other, uh, I can't even remember what my other point was now, but. Um, yeah, we, we, we really, we're not getting the evidence that we claim that we should be able to see um, at 30 miles. So if I take ballers with me and I take flats with me in the vehicle and we all verify that same observation from 30 miles away, and if it happens to coincide consistently with the previous evidence that we've took, and I'm absolutely certain it will do because I've been back numerous times in a variety of different conditions and I still see it, it isn't going to change. It means that we can rule out this idea, this fiction, that there is some kind of magic phenomena that just so happens to be present at that exact time, that just so happens to magnify and, and reflect and, and follow the exact curve yeah. of the Earth to make it look like we're looking behind the curve. It's bullshit. I, I understand, trust me. I, I, it's frustrating because there are other... This is that confirmation bias thing, is yeah. that they, they, they don't... Okay, I've been putting it this way lately. Let's say you and... Let's say Negator and I were at a beach. We're watching the sunset. Or negative or you, whatever. And negator is like, okay, do you see how the sun is being obscured? Bottom up. And you go, yes. And you go, okay, well, that's it going behind the curvature. Now you would go, that's um, it. well, you would go, well, actually, it might be our, going past our convergence point. It's moving away from us, and it's really just atmospheric conditions. And there seems to be a reflection uh, mirage right there, giving the impression of a false horizon. And that's what it seems to be going behind. Now, yeah, there is another explanation. You both looked at the same data set. Everybody's talking past each other. The, you get what I'm saying? Another... Like, there's two filters here that people are trying to use out here, and they. To understand Mideast newspaper headlines, you have to know about the background, the foundation, which the headlines are based on. To understand Mideast newspaper. Right, here we go. Two shows.
To understand Mideast newspaper headlines, you have to know about the background, the foundation, which the headlines are based upon. What are these headlines about? They're about the Palestinians, Israel, Iraq. To understand Israel, you have to know something about the Holocaust. That's essential for understanding Israel and the special relationship Israel has with the United States. We could learn about the Holocaust through TV shows, books, newspapers. But look at the quality of the newspaper. Here's a Mideast headline in the San Francisco Chronicle. Israel storms Arafat headquarters. But with so many important things happening in the world, look what the editor chose for the top story of the day. A cheesy humor piece. Son puts mom up for sale on eBay. So let's not use newspapers or TV programs. Instead, let's learn about the Holocaust by getting a book written by a professor. The standard work on the Holocaust is The Destruction of the European Jews by Professor Raoul Hilberg. It comes in three volumes. To the right is the condensed version for students. We'll be using the three-volume version, published in 1985. Uh, Here's Raoul Hilberg from the movie Shoah, directed by Claude Landsman. In all of my work, I have never begun by asking the big questions because I was always afraid that I would come up with small answers and I have preferred, therefore, to address these things which are minutiae or detail in order that I might then be able to put together in a gestalt a picture which, uh, if not an explanation, is at least a description, a more full description of what transpired. On page 1219, there is a table showing the number of deaths broken down into categories. Hilbert put the total Holocaust deaths at 5.1 million. I know you've heard the 6 million number, but Hilbert, having researched the subject for 40 years at the time the book came out, arrived at an estimate of 5.1 million. Hilbert gives a breakdown of the deaths that occurred at the camps.